right, it is time for TV Musings. Hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you this video. This is going to be some TV musings on shows that I have watched on streaming. So let's get right to it. The first show is Archive 81. This is something that I watched on Netflix. I believe it's a Netflix original. Um, it is a mystery thriller, paranormal mystery thriller. Uh, it follows a guy who is an archivist, so he archives um, video uh, materials, and he is recruited by this sort of, you know, powerful, elusive, uh, well-financed company to uh, restore some old videos. And I, I believe he's not supposed to watch them, but, you know, he does. <laughs> and strange things on the videos, strange things start to happen. So I really enjoyed this one. Um, it's definitely creepy uh, and spooky. And I liked one of the things that I really liked about it was the pace in which it had the story go. And also the pace in which it re not re relayed information um, and has that sort of verite style, but not verite style, because like we're watch, it's verite style in terms of the fact that we're watching the videos, but it's not verite because we have this framing device of someone restoring the videos. So if you liked films like uh, Wreck or um, The Last Exorcism, um, or gosh, I'm trying to figure like what was the what, what was the first was Wreck the first one? Like REC, I can't remember if that was the first one. Oh no, of course not. Blair Witch Project. <laughs> of course not. We're going back a few years with Blair Witch Project, but it has this framing device of someone restoring video. So we're not always just in the video in terms of watching the video and the strange things that happen. I really like this one. I thought it had some really interesting, engaging uh, storylines. Uh, I like the characters a lot. Um, it definitely was creepy. Um, and I and it had lots of backstory. And because it's a TV series, you get lots more character development than you would get in, um, in a film. It isn't, I think it's only like eight or nine episodes, but they're longer episodes. I think they're usually an hour. I thought it was great. Like genuinely, I thought I really just really enjoyed it and it, but it is creepy. So if you get creeped out by like that kind of like horror stuff, then maybe not. But if you love that kind of horror stuff, definitely go for it. Um, my sister Susie recommended this to me. So thank you, Susie, for the recommendation. Uh, we used to have a paranormal TV podcast together. And uh, this is definitely a show that we would have talked about on Hexed because it, it just really just hits all of the markers for a paranormal show where you're, you know, curious and engaged. And what could it be? And could it be that? Oh, what's that? And do I know anything about that? Or do they know anything about that? Like it just had all of those things that I find really interesting and engaging. So um, unfortunately, this one was canceled, which is is really too bad um, and I do feel like we they did not not know that when they were filming like I felt like it was leading up for a second season that being said I do feel like the first season like story does come you know, to completion, but it definitely had a lead in for a potential second season, which unfortunately didn't happen because it was canceled. But I thought it was great. And it was nice to see something. Uh, I haven't watched tons of Netflix originals. Actually, let me know your favorite Netflix original show. Um, because I feel like maybe I don't watch a lot of them. I'm more likely to watch the movies. But I thought this was great. And I wish that they would make more shows like this, even if they are like a self contained one series. Um, they actually have tons of shows I just I don't I don't think of them in that way oh there's one show but I'm in the middle of it so I'll wait till I finished it before sharing anyway archive 81 I really enjoyed it let me know if you watched it I thought it was a lot of fun um so the next one is one that is uh has some potential swearing in the in the in the first in the title, so I will say it once and just leave it at that. So that is Schitt's Creek. Now, this is a show that I was super late to the game on. That one's a bit white in it. Let's go with this picture. Um, I was super late to the game on. This is a Canadian comedy that was just absolutely blew up. Like, everyone, I was just, it's, I got to tell you, it was really it's a really odd experience for people to be talking about a Canadian show, especially one that I'm not watching, but I'm thrilled. I am thrilled that it had 
so much support, so much um, acclaim, so much love, and it really deserves it. I did start watching it when it first came out, but there was some comedy about about one particular character that I didn't like, and it involved, and I've realized that this is a bit of a shtick in comedy, which is like making people uncomfortable, like the relationship of one person feeling much more like, hey, we're friends, than the other person. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. And that person also tended to do uncomfortable comedy, especially with like food and stuff like that. I don't like that. I just don't like it. So for me, it was just that one particular character. Everything else I love. The family, I loved. I absolutely loved the family. I love their stories. Um, and so this is, if you're unfamiliar with the show, it follows a family that had, that was super rich and had some kind of business empire. I can't even remember, but they lose it all. Um, and they, all they have left is that they are, they have like the, the deed to a town or something. And it is the title of the show so they have to go live there they're living in the motel they don't really have anything and they've gone so it's a riches to rags story if you will and I just I thought it was great and I, it came back on my radar in like I think maybe it's third or fourth season when it ended up having like just four I think acting uh, nominations for comedy and that's like the whole cast right like that's the cat so and then it just had so many so I was like okay so it, at that point it was on Netflix so I decided to start watching it it took me a while to get into it because again that sort of I don't watch a lot of comedies and that sort of like uncomfortable comedy I had to just sort of get over it and now that I've watched other ones like after watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine I'm like oh yeah there's a character who actually did the same thing he just sort of felt like he was more friends with someone else than the other person and he had all of these sort of like food like gross out food things and I'm like that just is not a character that appeals to me so that's fine I'm sure there's other characters that I love that other people don't love and that's fine so once I got over that I was just like oh and then and then at some point I don't know when it just stole my heart like it just like just you just have so many feels and you just care so much about the characters and I loved all of the characters. I also really love Stevie, who's not on this. Did I get one with Stevie? I don't think so. I think I just got one with the family. So yeah, there are... <laughs> and there's just so many moments, and Moira, Moira's vocabulary is like next level, like next, next level. It's absolutely extraordinary. But yeah, so I definitely highly recommend uh, the show. It was, I was very touched and moved by some of the storylines within it you know, and it's, it's well worth watching. So yeah, so I'm trying to get getting some comedy in. <laughs> I don't get tons of comedy in, but I got a few. Actually, this one is also comedy. And this one I've talked about before. And that's Wellington Paranormal. Um, so this one um, uh, is a New Zealand cop comedy featuring uh, this two person team. Uh, and then eventually expands a little bit, um, where it's their captain and two people and <laughs> I forget his name, um, where they go and investigate any of the paranormal activities going on in the town. Now, this is, I, I believe it's a light spinoff from what we do in the shadows, I think. Um, and so I just watched the final season, which I think was season four. I had talked about this one before, and then the final season was announced. They're very short episodes. It's like, you know, 22 minute episodes. And like, it, it's just, it's just over the top comedy. And the dynamic between the two, we have the, the guy, he never understands what's going on. And then like, he always takes things literally. And which is funny, because you think taking things literally in a paranormal situation is a good thing, but he always gets it wrong. And then the woman cop always gets it right. And she always is like perfectly appropriate response to every single situation. So yeah. Anyway, I enjoyed it a lot. It's pretty over the top in terms of the comedy. Um, but I just, they're both so straight faced in terms of their responses and him with not understanding and her with always understanding. It just, it leads to a lot of really good, um, comedy moments. And, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, another one that I really enjoyed. One that actually might be a little bit surprising that I, I watched and I haven't talked about it before and it's not a very long show. It's only two seasons of like six episodes and that is Fleabag. 
flea bag. Sorry, flea bag. This is extraordinary. It is a dark comedy. Trigger warnings, check trigger warnings if you need them. It is the, there's lots of language, like without question, lots of language, but also some really harsh topics. Um, not really harsh. There's, I'll just say that it, the, it deals with grief. Um, so that is something to be aware of going in because that's quite present throughout. Um, and, um, and it follows a woman who opened a cafe with her friend and she doesn't get along very well with like anyone else and she has lots of um relationships and I well I the draw for me to this one was actually that Olivia Coleman is in it as a secondary character she plays her um dad's like girlfriend and so that's why how the show came on my radar. And so I watched it and I was like, wow, because it's a dark comedy and it is dark. Like it is pretty, like it is, but it is visceral. And, but it's so well done. And the acting is really good, but it has a lot of content that is like, you know, adult. And so not everyone's going to like that. But I thought it was done very, very well. And in the second season, um, Andrew Scott is in it and he's a great actor I I saw him in a version of King Lear um and then he's also that was I was like who is this person <laughs> like because he just like that was you know he had a small part but it was extraordinary and then he was also in Sherlock the Benedict Cumberbatch Sherlock TV show and he was excellent in that as well and he was excellent in this as well and the lead the woman who plays the lead also created the show and I think it was based on a one woman show at a theater festival and I totally get that like it has that sort of talk to the camera no holds barred this is the situation kind of like you know um life's turmoils uh vibe to it which very lends itself to a one person show but it was great so for me this one is very much not sort of like the normal thing that I would watch but wow it was so good and Olivia Coleman was also really great all of the acting was great in this and there was lots of complicated lots of complicated relationship stuff and 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 the humor was was sometimes dark sometimes like whoa did someone really just say that and am I just like what's going on like it really is you know, this is an adult one and, uh, and, and dark comedy, which is not normally my thing, but it was, it was excellent. It was absolutely excellent. So those are all shows that are finished. So Fleabag completed at season two, Wellington Com Paranormal completed at season four. Um, and I can't remember how much the, okay, so the not swearing, swearing <laughs> title <laughs> of Schitt's Creek. I can try to remember, it might have been seven seasons, but it came to, like, they knew it was the final season. And I can't remember, there is a, a, a do, like, a short documentary with Daniel Levy, and I imagine also Eugene Levy, on Netflix. And I can't remember if I watched it. I think I started to watch it, and I'm like, this is gonna, I'm just gonna get too emotional watching it. So I think I didn't end up watching it, but I should. And I think, did I watch it? I don't think I did, because I can't think of seeing scenes from it. And for me, honestly, it's so weird to see, because I grew up with, oh, an Archive 81 was cancelled. So it didn't get renewed. It was cancelled. So unfortunately, so that one's not continuing. Um, but with one of the things that was so weird about seeing, watching, not swearing, swearing, the title of Schitt's Creek, um, the, for me, as someone who grew up watching, like, SCTV, the moment I saw Daniel Levy, I was like, oh, I'm like, it's Eugene Levy's son. Like, it was just, it's so, so it's so weird for me to, and to see them acting together and playing father-son is, like, really cool, but it's just so weird, because it's like, he looks so much like him, but not like him, but it's just, like, it just, it, th it threw me off for a while as well, because it's just so clear, because I'm like, I just, and especially because, like, watching you do Lumpy and stuff in on, like, SETV, it's, like, sketch comedy and also, like, always weird, you know, costumes and characters and caricatures and all that kind of thing. But then, then seeing someone and being like, you were so clearly his son. <laughs> it was just, it was very, very wild. And um, so, yeah, and it's really cool that, you know, that the show, I think they created it together 
and like that's also just really wonderful to see and um and again I mean like for me it's just I'm just so happy that a Canadian show was so like wi wildly and widely um like loved like it just it, that just is really wonderful to see. So anyway, those are all shows that I watched in very different tones, but all shows I ended up really liking. Um, and but unfortunately, there is no more. But I did finish them. Um, some of them took quite a while. Even Fleabag, which was only twelve episodes, I think it was tough because I'm like sometimes I'm just like I can't. It's not a. It's not a two episode in a row. I I don't watch a lot of episodes in a row. I tend to watch one. And if it's the start of a series, I might watch two. And I do tend to watch the last and the the penultimate and the last together. If there's two episodes left, I'll watch together. But generally, I watch one. I don't watch seven in a row. I can't do that. I just, I just, I lose retention. It's diminishing returns, you know. Um, and so, yeah, but I, all of these, I really, really enjoyed. So let me know, have you seen any of them? Is there anything like any of these that you would recommend? So any paranormal mystery? or Canadian comedies or New Zealand <laughs> parodies <laughs> or dark comedies. Actually, I wouldn't, I, I, I'm not, like, Fleabag was a, I don't watch a lot of dark comedy, but I'm glad that I did. Um, really good story, really great characters, amazing acting, but it's not something that I watch all the time, but I'm glad that I watched it. And it's kind of funny that I watched it because Olivia Coleman was in it and she's not, I don't even think she's in every episode, but she's great. She's such a good actor. Everyone in it was good. Everyone. So yeah, let me know. Did you see any of these shows? Have you seen anything recently that you enjoyed? That's a complete series. So I would love to hear all about it. All right, that's it for this video. I'll be back in another one. Thank you so much for watching.